This video is going to be a revision video for session 20 of Java and Wave. I already have created a video on thread life cycle. But number of states of thread life cycle discussed in that video was very small. In this video, we are going to have a complete discussion on thread life cycle. Namaste everyone, I am Gyan and you are watching this session 20 of Java and Wave, multi-threading in Java. So the thread life cycle starts from this statement as we already know. We have created a new thread and we got a new born thread. After that, when we call the method start by using the reference variable t, the newly born thread will be started and go to the ready to run state. The ready to run state is also called runnable state. The thread scheduler always picks a thread from the runnable state. So the thread scheduler picks the thread from the runnable state and the thread goes to running state. Here the thread is executing on the CPU. Then after if run method completes or if stop method called, then the thread will go to the dead state. When we call the method yield on the running state, then the thread will again go to the ready to run state. We know that the method yield can be ignored by the thread scheduler. The method yield is just a hint to the thread scheduler that the thread is ready to pause its execution and the thread is ready to go from the running state to the runnable state. This is just a hint. But if this hint is accepted by the thread scheduler, then the scheduler will take the thread from the running state to the ready to run state or runnable state. If a thread is in running state and goes for a sleep, then the thread will go in the sleeping state. After sleeping time expires or the thread is interrupted during sleeping, the thread will again go to the ready to run state. And we know that all the threads in ready to run state are eligible to be scheduled by the scheduler. So after sleeping time expires, a thread never goes in the running state directly. The thread goes in the ready to run state. If a thread is in the running state and the suspend method has been called, then the thread will go in the suspended state. If the thread is in the suspended state and the resume method has been called on that thread, then the thread will again go in the ready to run state. If the thread is in the running state and the thread is waiting for other thread to complete by calling the join method on the other thread, then the thread will go in another type of waiting state. Here it is waiting for another thread to complete. After completion of the another thread or if the join time expires or if the waiting thread interrupted, in all these three cases, the thread who is waiting for another thread will go in the ready to run state. If the thread is in the running state and the thread calls the wait method, then the thread will go in the waiting state. And if the notification comes from that thread for which the thread was waiting or if the waiting time expires or if the waiting thread interrupted, in these three cases, the waiting thread will try to get a lock again. And after getting the lock, the thread will go to the ready to run state. So you can see here from the running state, either a thread can go to the dead state or the thread can go to the ready to run state. Does not matter the thread is calling wait method or join method or sleep method or suspend method, the thread always end in the ready to run state. From the ready to run state, again it will be scheduled by the thread scheduler. So this was the complete discussion of the thread life cycle. Hopefully you got all my points. The links of the videos discussing these methods are given in the video description. That's all for this video guys. Don't forget to like and share this video. Subscribe my channel on YouTube, like my page on Facebook and leave your available comments in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.